Hello students, today we are going to understand the process by which thyroid hormone namely thyroxine in short T4 and triiodothyronine in short T3 are synthesized by the thyroid gland. As we all know, thyroid gland secretes T3 and T4. It's a butterfly shaped bilobed endocrine gland located in the neck region. Look at this figure. It shows a microscopic structure of the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is composed of these spherical follicles. The follicles consist of cuboidal epithelium and the central follicular lumen. So these are the cuboidal follicular cells and this is the follicular lumen. Now these cuboidal cells secrete a sticky fluid called as colloid and this colloid fills the central follicular lumen. These follicles of thyroid gland secrete T3 and T4. Now thyroid gland is highly vascular and it is richly supplied by the blood. Now these are the blood capillaries. So T3 and T4 are synthesized in the follicular cells and in the follicular lumen. Now before going into the details of T3 and T4 synthesis, let's quickly review some important requirements and structures related to T3 and T4 synthesis. As already discussed, T3 and T4 are synthesized in follicular cells and in the colloid, that is in the follicular lumen. Let's now study about uh, thyroglobulin in short Tg. Thyroglobulin is a glycoprotein uh, that is synthesized by the thyroid follicles. Now as thyroglobulin is a large protein, it provides a polypeptide backbone for the synthesis of T3 and T4. So this structure represents thyroglobulin. Now these are the tyrosyl residues. Now each thyroglobulin molecule contain approximately 120 tyrosyl residues. Now T3 and T4 are synthesized on these tyrosyl residues of thyroglobulin. Next is the iodine. Iodine is essential for the synthesis of T3 and T4 and this iodine is obtained from the diet. Now few sources of dietary iodine are iodized salt, then dairy products, some edible seaweeds etc. Now look at these structures. This is monoidotyrosin, in short MIT, as it consists of one iodine on the tyrosyl residue. Now this is diiodotyrosin, in short DIT, as it consists of two iodines on the tyrosyl residue. Now this is the structure of uh, thyroxine hormone, in short T4. It is formed by the coupling of two diiodotyrosin. Now Trionin. Trionin refers to two tyrosyl residues. Now the structure of T4 consists of two tyrosyl residues and four iodine and therefore T4 is termed as 3535-tetraidotrionin. Now T3 consists of three iodines. So it is termed as 353-triidotrionin. T3 is formed by the coupling of one monoidotyrosin and one diidotyrosin. So these are some important structures you should know before going into the depth of synthesis of T3 and T4. Uh, now look at this chart. It shows the synthesis of uh, T3 and T4. Now here the synthesis of T3 and T4 are represented in 11 steps. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So there are 11 steps. Now this is the zoomed view of a thyroid follicle. Now these are the cuboidal follicular cells and this is the central follicular lumen containing the colloid. Now this is one complete follicular cell and this is the blood capillary. Now let's uh, see to the steps involved in the synthesis of T3 and T4 one by one. So first step is the release of thyroid stimulating hormone in short TSH in the blood by the anterior pituitary. 
Now TSH stimulates the process of synthesis of T3 and T4. So this TSH binds to TSH receptors on the follicular cells and activate the follicle. Now this stimulates the synthesis of large protein that is the thyroglobulin by rough endoplasmic reticulum of the follicular cuboidal cell. So this follicular cuboidal cell synthesizes the thyroglobulin under the influence of thyroid stimulating hormone. Now this thyroglobulin is enclosed in a vesicle. Now this vesicle fuses with the cell membrane and thyroglobulin is released in the follicular lumen by the process of ex exocytosis. Now as you can see this thyroglobulin consists of tyrosyl residues. Now approximately 120 such tyrosyl residues are present on one thyroglobulin molecule. Now uh, apart from this as we all know iodine is essential for the synthesis of T3 and T4. So this is the sodium iodide symporter. Now this sodium iodide symporter it actively transports iodine ions from the blood into the follicular cells. Now from the follicular cells the, these uh, iodide ions are further transported into the lumen by a transporter that is called as pandrin. So now by the end of uh, step 5 both thyroglobulin as well as iodide ion and are in the follicular lumen. Now next this iodide ion is oxidized to iodine by the enzyme thyroid peroxidase. Now this oxidized iodine, iodine is highly reactive and it quickly uh, combines with the tyrosyl residues on the thyroglobulin and the process is called as iodination. Now this is a thyroglobulin. Now as we can see iodine is attached here uh, on this tyrosyl residue at two places. So this forms the diiodotyrosyl whereas here um, on this tyrosyl tyrosyl residue iodine is attached at one place. So this forms monoidotyrosin. So tyrosyl residues of uh, thyroglobulin are iodinated to form diiodotyrosin and monoidotyrosin. Now next step is the coupling. Now do two diiodotyrosin couple to form T4 whereas one diiodotyrosin and one monoidotyrosin couple uh, to form T3. So this is one uh, diiodotyrosin and one monoidotyrosin that forms the T3. So T3 as well as T4 are formed on this thyroglobulin molecule. Now this thyroglobulin complex with T3, T4, then diiodotyrosin, monoidotyrosin is to be transported from the follicular lumen to the cuboidal cell by the process of endocytosis. So this complex of thyroglobulin enters the follicular cell as T3 and T4 are to be finally secreted in the blood. Now the next process is proteolysis. Now lysosomal enzymes and other proteolytic enzymes cut T3 and T4 from the thyroglobulin complex. So T3 and T4 thus formed are finally secreted into the blood by the process of exocytosis. So finally T3 and T4 are synthesized by the follicle and secreted in the blood. Now as we know T4 is inactive while T3 is active. So T4 is deiodinated to T3 that is one iodine is removed from T4 to produce T3 in organs like liver and kidneys. So this is the process by which T3 and T4 are synthesized. Uh, now let's uh, summarize the process by which T3 and T4 are synthesized. So first is the release of uh, TSH. TSH binds to its receptors on the follicular cells. 
On one hand, there is synthesis of uh, thyroglobulin. This thyroglobulin is synthesized in the follicular cells and then this thyroglobulin is released into the lumen by the process of exocytosis. On the other hand, this uh, sodium iodide symporter, it actively transports iodide ions from the blood into the follicular cell. Now, pandarin further transports these iodide uh, ions from the cell into the lumen. Now, this iodide is further oxidized to iodine. Now, tyrosyl residues on thyroglobulin are iodinated to form diiodotyrosine and monoiodotyrosine. Now, further, these diiodotyrosine and monoiodotyrosine couple to form T3 and T4. Now, this thyroglobulin complex with T3, T4, diiodotyrosine, monoiodotyrosine is transported from the follicular lumen to the cell by the process of endocytosis. Now, further, lysosomal enzymes, they cut T3 and T4 from thyroglobulin complex. Finally, these T3 and T4 are released in the blood by the process of exocytosis. So, this is the entire process by which T3 and T4 are synthesized by the follicle and secreted in the blood. Now, this is the slide that uh, gives the summary of the steps involved in the synthesis of T3 and T4. So, if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.